Good morning, everybody. This is Christine Bertram, and I'm coming to you live from the hive here on a Wednesday morning. <laughs> it definitely is the morning. <laughs> um, <clears throat> if I sound any different, it's because I still have my morning voice, you guys. I don't think you usually ever hear me in the morning, <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> All right. So thanks for waiting for me, for you guys. I had to run upstairs and grab some extra things. Oh, my computer just opened up to the live, so I better go shut that off. <laughs> Hang on, guys. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> I had my laptop open because there's some steps involved with going live, you guys. When you get it all set up here, then I go over to my computer and I add a cover photo and I add tags and I add the time and the description and all that good stuff. And so I had my computer open and to the actual live and all of a sudden it started playing over there. I'm like, oh, I can hear myself. Hi, Susan Bellamy. Hi, Patty Wright. Hi, Donna Grushke. Hi, Randy Schultz. Hi, Sherry Everett. I know Sherry Pyers here. This is her card we're working on today. Hi, Vicki Eakins. Hi, Sarah Merchant. Hi, Mary Lemke and Linda Hall. Yay, I know we're going to have a little bit smaller of a crowd today. And that's okay. It's Wednesday morning. And this little boy wants to say hi to you. This is Hunky, you guys. He's a little bit of a wiggle worm. Um, he's looking to probably find the light box over here. He has been sleeping in the corner, or he might go all the way around. So there he goes. Okay. So I had to run upstairs, you guys, and get a few more things. All of a sudden, in my head, I had it. Well, what if I want to use this? Or what if I want to use that? And then all of a sudden, I ran upstairs twice to get things. Hi, Karen Karstick. <laughs> so I got my um, scalp contour dyes just in case I need them. So, all right. We have a great card, I think. <laughs> I know. Sherry sent me a great card um, to make with you guys today. And we're going to do that momentarily. But I wanted to show you some happy mail before we get started. Um, hi, Susan Wormley. Um, he's back there drinking water. Tigger, you guys, if you're wondering where bigger Mr. Bigger Tigger is. Do you see that cat in the window? It's that, how much is that cat in the window? <laughs> that one with the really waggly tail. He's obsessed. Tyler cuts wood, you guys. Hi, Denise. Um, he, <laughs> yeah, Hunky is getting bigger, you guys. Um, Tyler likes woodworking. Like, as much as I love crafting and making cards and creating with paper, Tyler loves to cut down dead trees, take the wood and cut it up, and um, stack it all along the back of the house here. And then we burn fires um, in the wood-burning fireplace all winter long. And so on the other side of that window over there is a massive pile of wood. And Tigger is obsessed with a chipmunk that goes up to the top of the pile and taunts Tigger. And then this chipmunk will run across, because the pile goes from one side to the other, Tigger will run across my entire counter and bulldoze everything that is on the counter if my laptop is open, he will step over the keyboard. No, no, no. He will step on the keyboard, like going over my keyboard, pressing any button that he possibly can, and then stuff flies. And so he, this chipmunk just gets him so wound up. It's just, it's fun to watch. Hi, Nedra Dover. So I'm going to drop the camera down, you guys. I want to show you a little bit of Happy Mail that I got, and I'm going to show you um, the DSP sampler that I'm working on. So, all right. Happy Mail. This came in the mail. Um, I got these jars, you guys, actually, <laughs> the ball jars. They came from Mary Lemke, and I was waiting. I'm not going to do it with my nail. I'm not breaking my nail, <laughs> opening a package. So Mary Lemke had these shipped to me. So I had to share them with you, you guys. Um, they're little ball jars, and they have bees on them. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a bee right there. So Mary Lemke um, said that we could drink beer out of them. We could drink um, lemonade out of them. We have iced tea out of them. I thought that they would look really pretty with flowers and decorated for my autumn creative escape, having flowers in them and having decorated, you know, decorations around the room. So there's four of them and they are super adorable. So I meant to show those last week when they arrived, but Mary, they've been in the my mud room the whole time. <laughs> I finally, it's like, I got to carry them over here. So all right, I've got a couple more pieces of Happy Mail. You guys, this one came from Jeannie Parker from Muskegon, Michigan. It says, Happy Bee Day. And she decorated it with yellow and black for the bees. And it says, You're the nicest. I love it. And then I got her registration for the Autumn Creative Escape. 
Um, I have, um, anybody filled out the Autumn Creative Escape registration, I do have it online. Those people that didn't know how to do it, I said it was okay to send the paper form. I only got like one or two paper forms, but Jeannie's one of them. And then we have Barbara Rudolph. Barbara Rudolph sent me this one. This is a great card, you guys, for the fun fold. Um, it's an easier fun fold because this opens like this, and then there's a flap here so that you can put in a gift card like that. So this is, um, <laughs> Sandy Wicklander sent me this. I keep this handy. It's proportional matting, but I always like to use that as my sample here. Um, and that is from Eden's Garden, this die, and it flaps down, and it kind of, it makes it look like it's all like one front panel, but it opens up like this. And this is some of that masterfully made paper, the in color dots, and then the stylish shape. So um, very pretty card there, Barbara. I love it. So two pretty cards I got in the mail from Jeannie Parker and Barbara Rudolph. Thank you so much for the happy mail. And um, this is what I wanted to show you guys. This is what we're working on. This is the first printout for the next designer series paper sampler. So what this is, what everybody who orders this for me will get these white sheets and they have all of the designer paper listed. You can see I have not put mine together yet. I print off an original copy just to make sure I don't have any spelling mistakes and everything is laid out good and that there's room for everything. And then there's one sheet for uh, specialty paper and then that's it. So what does that look like though when it's finished in case anybody's wondering, um, you would glue your swatches of cardstock and designer paper onto the sheets. And the reason I'm showing this to you guys is because I have not decided how many to make. I'm on the fence and these splinters are getting really bad in between my legs, like you know when you ride the fence. <laughs> so I'm like, do I make 60, 64, or 72? That is what I'm wondering. What would you guys do? Um, I know the annual catalog, I did make 72 and they were gone and I could have done a couple more, but not as many people get the annual catalog, um, the, the mini catalog one versus the annual, but I am at 60. So. So do I go with 72 and hope that 12 more will go? Or do I go with 64 and hope four more go? But so yes, that's the dilemma that's walking through my head right now. Um, so any advice would be appreciated. <laughs> so um, my brother will be here on Friday, you guys. I'm super excited. My brother comes down three times a year. Hi, Carol Alanis. Um, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, those jars are super cute, Linda. Um, my brother, hi Jean Maxwell, hi Linda Hunt. My brother comes down, hi Connie Moore. He comes down three times a year uh, to help me specifically with this huge project. Um, it is, uh, uh, many people have their hands in it. My Aunt Karen, she cuts out all the swatches for me. My brother and I cut all the two by two and one by two and one and a half by one and a half squares. Um, my friend Rachel prints them at her parents' company. And um, my cousin Kelly, um, helps me make that layout and so it's a, a lot and it all we all get it and gets done <laughs> all in like one day and that is what we have planned for Friday and I need to tell Rachel I should have told her yesterday already but I've been like I don't know what to tell her so somebody shoot out a number and the majority of the number that you guys vote for I'm just gonna go with that number so your options are 60 64 or 72 I need some executive decision making made right now <laughs> so and then after I get off my live with you guys I can send over the file and tell her the quantity and you know what even if she prints that many and I don't end up making them all, it's, you know what, maybe it doesn't hurt to, oh, I don't know. So I'm gonna stop thinking about it and we're gonna have class, you guys. See, these are the things that you have to think about when you're trying to figure out how many of something to make because you don't wanna have a lot extra and you don't wanna be short by a lot. Like that forecasting is a, a magical number, right? Um, I know that for my ink, paper, scissors for June and July, we ran out for May and then I overdid for June and July. And August is looking to be spot on for these cards, which I'm having in front of me, you guys, for this card right here. Um, you guys said 64, 64, 64, 72. Seal says 72. Okay. So I've got three 64s. So this is the ink, paper, scissors for this month for August. And they are all four fun folds. And I have about um, made the same number for June, July, and August. And I only have about eight left of this class. Um, so Connie Moore says sign her up. Okay, yay. So there you go. There I have one more person um, on the list. <laughs> so let me get my little, I have these little scrap pieces over here. Um, you guys, I want to show you these cards because I, I'm going to use these today to um, work on 
Sherry Pyre's card. So Sherry is our star recipe giver to this month. Um, I'll talk about that in a moment. But I brought up um, these because I'm going to use these cards for inspiration for making um, the card layout that Sherry has. I think. I'm hopeful. And I wanted to show you guys these one more time because this class is until August 31st. So it's really in two weeks from, it's today the 16th, yes. Two weeks from tomorrow night is this class. And I have about eight left. So I'm on target to have none left of this class. And these are all for fun folds. And I'm showing them to you guys one more time because, you know what? Maybe somebody hasn't seen this class yet and they are interested in it. And this is like um, Barbara's card with the gift card. So I'm going to keep these on standby here to use for inspiration and ideas um, for this one. I think you sell 72 be a lot of soda. Yes, because they're, they're slow to reserve. So you know what? And then usually afterwards, if I have to say no, I have to say no. But at least if people sign up after Friday, then I can at least say yes. And you're right. So I got 72, 72, 72. Ooh, it's half now. So it's like it's half and half, you guys. <laughs> you guys are riding on this fence with me. <laughs> How do you like it? <laughs> oh, man. So, all right, let's talk about what we're going to do today, you guys. So we have this book. This book it came to be because of Rose. <laughs> Rose Coleman from Canada and I started working together um, this past year. It has been awesome, you guys. I think that those have been taking uh, Rose's class. I've been kidding up in the, in the US and then Rose kits up a class that I do in Canada. And so we've had this awesome collaboration. It has helped both of our businesses and you guys have been truly awesome supporting both of us. Um, it's great because I had a lot of people watching from Canada and now they can go to Rose to get a class that I do. And I Rose had a lot and still continues to have a lot of people in the US that watch her. And this way people can get a class that she does. And so it kind of is like a win-win. Well, out of that came this book because I did not opt to buy the Memories and More book in Stampin' Up's catalog, which I probably should have as a demonstrator. I should have bought the book that Stampin' Up provides, but it didn't have the page protectors. And so it was like I was shopping for page protectors. Splinter Sock makes 72. <laughs> All right, Denise. Jean says 64. Um, so, so I was looking for page protectors because you need four by six page protectors for what you do with Rose's class with the Technique Club. And so as I was shopping for page protectors, I came across a beautiful recipe book. And this is how it kind of got to be that I end up with this recipe book. And so now I end up, people want the recipe book, which is great. It was just fine. Um, instead of the Memories of More book, which I, hey, everybody can choose what they want, right? So I ended up with this recipe book because of the page protectors. And on in a nutshell, this is Rose's technique club that eventually you end up getting these techniques. I finished it. Yay. For those of you who've been watching me time after time, I finally got to sponging that and say, stamping a sentiment. Um, yesterday Rose taught class and it was fun with embossing paste. I believe I have one or two of this class left in case, uh, hmm, I think I have three actually in case anybody still wants to start the club, um, or get this class in general. I have, um, I think I have three of this one left. So what happened was I get all these recipe cards. And so we started this back in March with Mary Lemke being the first person. And then we had Sandy Wicklander. And we also had, I believe that was Millie Kindle. Yep. And then Jean Maxwell. And then we had Sherry Everett. And so you guys can see like their card is here. And then, or my card is there. And I put um, their card and I have my recipe card here, which is awesome. I got Dion Miller's in the mail as well. And so Dion is going to be next. Let me see, hang on one. I have one more that came in. Hang on. Susan Corsello. So you guys, I'm gonna put this out there into the world. Susan sent me on a different recipe card and if you are like me, potentially like a type A personality and everything has to be matching and like exact, <laughs> meaning the recipe card is different. I think Susan, if you're watching, I will reach out to you too. But um, so I, when you guys, there's a way to sign up to get the recipe card and then I'll mail it to you. And so I just sent a couple out in the mail for people who had asked for them. Um, I really want all the recipe cards to be on my recipe cards so that they're the same, right? Throughout my book. And so um, it was, so Susan worked ahead and she sent me her recipe on um, her recipe card. So I'm going to send Susan my recipe card in the mail so that she can 
oh, it's extra work. I get it. But then it's all cohesive. You guys are like things to like when you're looking through the book, all the recipe cards were the same. So, um, so just be patient. Um, you can see that I want everything to be consistent. I will, I go through that list, um, maybe like once a month and then I send the recipe cards out. So we're good for today because we have Sherry Pyre. We have Dion Miller, and then we will have Susan Curcello. So we have, you guys, I was getting worried, like, I didn't have any, and then Sherry came through. And so we have August, September, October. So there are, like, maybe five more that are lingering out there in the land that need to come back. And so we're going to keep doing this class as long as you guys enjoy it and you like the cards that we're making and um, just like another class, right? <laughs> Go for 72. Splinters suck. Yes, I saw that again. <laughs> So, all right. So I keep, I keep that back there and now I think we're ready to get going. So with this class, you guys, it's the, the class that you get me to stamp on the fly. Um, we, uh, don't always know what we're making beforehand. Um, I read through it. I get an idea in my head and then we go for it. <laughs> so, and then I thought to myself, and you guys, you're right. I should go for 72. And just to think about that, I keep seeing it. 72 is the magical number. It really is because it uses two full packs of designer paper. One full pack makes 36 and a second full pack of 12 by 12 paper makes 72 because 36 times two is 72. And then when you have the little six by six papers, you actually, um, it all works out to 72. Where 64, you're ending up with... Um, two side strips left over. So you guys are probably right. Make 72. <laughs> Hi, Sandy Wicklinder. All right. So let's go through Sherry's card. You guys, this is the class where I procrastinate a little bit too. I talk a lot <laughs> before I get going. Susan loves this class. Great. This is also another class where you guys get to share your card and be entered in for a drawing for a prize. And I'll show you that in a bit too. Okay. We have, this is uh, the reveal card. So you can see here that when, when you do this and participate, you get a recipe card from me and then you send me a card. So in this case, <clears throat> like Susan Corsello's already sent her card and in this envelope from Deanne Miller, um, I have the recipe um, card and a card as well. And then what I do is at the end, I show you their card and then you guys can see what how I did it maybe differently <laughs> based off of the recipe. So it's kind of like a... Um, a reverse reverse mystery card night right and uh, I will tell you guys I did not get the mystery card night clue one published yesterday for not having a very busy day it ended up being a very busy day and in a good way always in a good way but it is on my radar to get the mystery card night clue one published today so that's happening all right so I have a hair that was attached to me that needs to go away all right so we're gonna talk through this before we actually start cutting and in my head I have this card kind of pegged or this one pegged. I grabbed, I had a one scrap of Lost Lagoon ribbon that I found. Um, I have the, either of these cards pegged in my head, not for the card style, but just for the center part of this. So that's why I brought these cards into like, mm, give me something to work with. I brought those stamps in as well, the inked and tiled stamps. Um, I might have to go grab the punch because I might not have grabbed that, but we're going to talk about what I think this card might be first. Because you know, in school, hi Penny Powell, my little sunshine friend from Florida, um, the, the recipe card they taught you in school always to read the recipe from start to finish before you make it, right? So that's what I kind of like to walk through. So a colored card stock is four and a quarter by five and a half. And that's the size of a mat, right? So a quarter sheet of card stock is gonna be the back side. Then we have a four by 10 and a half. And it doesn't, Oh, it does here. It says sh score at five and a quarter. So that to me means that there's going to be a piece of cardstock and it's whiter vanilla. And that's going to be a cardstock that either could open horizontally or vertically. And that gets like in my head is glued to the first mat. And then we have cardstock in whiter vanilla that's three and a quarter by four and a quarter. Um, and then matching and i'm trying to think it says or a die cut piece that to me could possibly be like a top piece for the card right something like this size or that size all right because this is about three and a quarter by four and a quarter um dsp matching in a one by 12 okay so something really long right to me like i'm thinking a belly band like is usually one by 12 because that could get wrapped around the card 
And then we have um, DSP squares. I missed saying these because I skipped right over it. But DSPs, um, two, three and a half by three and a half, two of them the same size. So this puts me back to a class that I did for celebration last year where there were two three and a half by three and a half squares that we folded and then the triangles kind of flapped over. And so they opened this way, open this way, and then you have the piece that opens up, right? And there was a belly band around it. So you guys, I read these and I'm like, oh, I think I know this card. And then on the back here, it says adhere the DSP squares to the back of the white or vanilla layer, kind of like what I just talked about. And then add that white vanilla card layer to a colored cardstock layer, stamp a sentiment on the inside, um, decorate the outside um, by stamping or using a piece of cording DSP, stamp a focal image on the three and a quarter by four and a quarter die cut piece. You may stamp a sentiment to or stamp a sentiment. So that's why I'm, I was drawn to this card for a, a layout for the front of it. Um, but if I wanted something smaller, I could always opt for something like this. So um, may stamp a sentiment to or stamp sentiments on a strip and pop up on it. Um, wrap the card with the 1x12 DSP, making a belly band and in the middle front because it like it's covered up the seam. And then add a stamped uh, three and a quarter by four and a quarter to the DSP strip, embellish as desired. So, all right. So you guys, we're going to make Sherry's card and then we're going to open her card and see what, what she has. So I'm going to just set this off to the side. Um, if anybody was still wanting to get signed up for the DSP sampler, just tell me here too. Um, always follow up with an email. That would be great. So I'm going to move this off to the side. And what we're going to do is, I have not picked out what we're going to use for DSP though. So I had picked out um, inked and tiled and all of these cards went with a coral lost lagoon theme because the designer series paper is all over that, right? So what happens though is that inked and tiled DSP is not. Um, Patty, in case you're wondering, your um, envelope arrived today. So I got this today, just so you know, I'll send uh, an email too. But in case I misplace it, <laughs> it came. <laughs> that has happened. So I pulled some different DSP because this inked and tiled DSP is only a six by six. So it wouldn't work to do a belly band. But now that I think of it, I could have done a belly band with a piece of cardstock as well. But I don't have that DSP down here with me. Um, so what I did pull, you guys, in case you're wondering, I'm like, I went upstairs because I keep my DSP upstairs where I design. I pulled Earthen Elegance and I pulled the Daisy Paper. And I'm like, Oof, maybe one of these will be uh, a good choice for us for the the DSP, and then we'll work with coordinating colors. Like this one, I always love, you guys, this is my favorite piece out of that whole pack, I think. That is like, and I have the most of that one left. All the other ones really have gotten consumed over, over the time with classes. So I was thinking that one, but these are daisies, right? But I didn't think that that would be too bad if I used that because that kind of looks like daisies that are just opening up. But I also have this one. And that one has the peacock on the back. And then this one has the wild wheat on the back. So this one is non-directional. And this one is pretty non-directional as well. And with these triangles, from what I remember, when you um, fold them diagonally, you can't have a direction because it might be going sideways or crooked. All right, so there's that. And on this one, I actually have a uh, half a sheet here, which could work. So I'm wondering if we go with that. And with Earthen Elegance, I pulled this one out, but there weren't, there was this sheet right here. This was kind of the only one that really thought that might be good to use because it would pull in some moody mauve um, and it's non-directional as well. But I'm feeling the daisies. I'm feeling the daisies. All right, so let's, so like that, one of the first things like when it comes to designing you guys, it's like what do you want to work with, right? So picking a designer series paper, if you're gonna be working with it, it's important to then pick that and then you pull in your cardstock colors. You know, if you're not using designer paper, then you don't, you know, then you work with whatever colors you want. But with this, I know that this is copper clay and pretty peacock. So let's hope that I have some pretty peacock, which I do, and some, mm -hmm. 
<laughs> some copper clay down here. And I do. You guys, one of these days, I will get my paper back and organize in an organized ma manner. So, <laughs> so I still have it like this. So here's copper clay. So I feel like that looks really nice with it. And let's hope I have a peacock down here. I hope that's a peacock right there. Yes. Okay. So we have a peacock. So these are the colors that I would put with this designer series paper. Hi, Cheryl Taylor. So I think this is the route I'm going to go. Um, my daisies, though, what color um, would you make daisies that go with this, right? Because these are white. And you can't really stamp white daisies on white. So I think that's where we could make our daisies potentially a yellow daisy. And then we'll make our stems and peacock, I think. So when it comes to this, the other color that possibly fits in here could be Lost Lagoon, right? Because some of the leaves here are Lost Lagoon. You guys, if you're ever wondering why I love Stampin' Up! so much, it's because they have such, an, it's all coordinating products, right? So the cardstock matches, the ink matches, the designer series paper matches, ribbon matches embellishments. It makes it so easy to create. So I'm going to leave these colors out here for cardstock and... Then we are going to go back to our recipe card and figure out layering. So we need either white or vanilla. And in this case, I would pick white because our flowers are white. If you had more vanilla or neutral undertones, you would pick potentially vanilla. But in this case, the white is what I would pick with this. See, that's looking really nice. And the easiest one on this is let's cut that base right? That is not the base part, but it's the, the flat part. And she said it's four by 10 and a half. So I'm going to cut this at four already like this. And then there's an arm on this trimmer that pulls out and you're going to cut it at 10 and a half. And then we're going to score it at five and a quarter. Now you could save this. If we end up putting a little strip, a sentiment strip on the card, like that could get saved for that. But now we need to score at five and a quarter, like this. And that's the one that is the lighter gray. All right. So that will fold like that. So that is part of our base. I'm going to burnish that right away. And now we got to figure out the other layering. So we have a piece of colored cardstock. And then this will go on it. And then we're going to figure out how our DSP works. And I don't know if we necessarily need... Um, both of these or all three of these. But what I do when I'm trying to figure out how to mat a piece of designer paper is I put the colored cardstock next to it like this. And to me, I'm like, ooh, that looks okay. It pulls up. Can you guys hear that? Those are the cats chasing after each other and that's their nails um, with them sliding on the floor. Um, <clears throat> the Lost Lagoon pulls the brighter leaves, but it doesn't make it pop, okay? So like, I'd be like, no, I don't think so. Then I go to this one and I look at copper clay back here and I think, well, that's pretty too. It would work, um, but the copper clay is so abundant on this pattern that it kind of gets lost. So then I would go next to, hi, Ileana. I would go to the pretty peacock. And for me, that to me is the winner because it complements the copper clay and it also makes those dark leaves pop even more and it accents the light leaves. So in my head, <clears throat> I would pick this peacock as being my bottom mat. And then this is what's gonna go here. And then um, I'm trying to still think here um, if there's one more piece that goes over the white. These are gonna be our triangles right? And then, so you'll see the peacock over the edge. So I think these are going to be our triangles. And I'm trying to think here, cardstock is that. We're going to cut our peacock next. So we have that. And that is a five and a half by four and a quarter. So I'm going to cut it at five and a half. And then that leaves this other half for an extra card base if I want to in the future. Hi, Marsha Long. And then this would be at four and a quarter like this. Okay. So this is our our real base, and this is an extension of our card base, right? Like that. Okay, then our DSP was three and a half by three and a half. And so I'm gonna be strategic about how I cut this because I, I need a one and a half inch, I need a one inch by 12 inch belly band. And 
if I cut this at three and a half this way, I could get three and a half and three and a half out of here because I think this is seven inches. But then I've just lost my 12 inch section that I need on the bottom. So I'm going to cut it like this. So three and a half by three and a half this way. Okay. That gives me the ability to cut my one by 12. And I'm thinking I'm going to use this side, right? So the one inch side will be the peacock side. So there's my one by 12. I think cardstock would have worked as well. Um, if you have cardstock like in peacock, I think that could have worked as well, but we're gonna do that because that's what we need. And then we need three and a half by three and a half, like this. Okay, <clears throat> so we'll leave that off to the side in case we need it later. What else do we have here? So what's happening with these is they need to get folded in half. And because it's designer series paper, you should be able just to you could have scored it. So like if you don't want to take the chance, you could set it up in your score right on that track and you could score it. And that will help you to fold it in half. But ultimately with this, we're going to fold that in half corner to corner and peaky to peaky. Okay, so there's one. The other guy is down here too. So we're going to go like that. And like that. Okay, make sure you don't use the cutting one. Make sure you use the scoring one. All right, so you've just scored those in half. All right, let's put it together and see once where we're at and see what I'm, I know I'm gonna cut a top piece too. So if I read this back here, because it says fold DSP squares in half diagonally and adhere the DSP squares to the back of the whiter vanilla cardstock layer. So what that means is this back layer here, you can figure out, well, I want that big flower to be on the front and I want it to be like this, okay? So what she's saying is you're gonna glue the DSP to the back here and then this wraps over the front like this. And I think I want, I like that bigger flower here. So this is going on the card front like this, right? That's how that's gonna get glued. So this opens this way this opens that way, and then this opens up this way, and it's complementary with the peacock. All right, so that's what we've got so far, but let's check out something else here. Hi, Catherine Healy. Hi, Jenna Helms. Let's see what else we're missing, because there was a three and a quarter by four and a quarter, and I believe that would be for the top, three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So let's cut a three and a quarter by four and a quarter white, and we should have here this chunk here, and this is four and a quarter, so we're gonna cut this at, well, it's actually a little bit bigger. So this is three and a quarter, and then we're gonna make this four and a quarter. I might trim this smaller if I want it a little bit smaller, because again, you guys, when it comes to creating cards, you start, for, start with something and then make it your own. If you feel like you wanna make a layer on the back, like this to me, it, it's seeming like that's what goes on the front, and I'm just gonna read it one more time. Add here the DSP to the back, which we did. Add a white vanilla card layer to colored card stock layer, which is back there, we that. Decorate the outside of the four by 10 layer by stamping or using a piece of coordinating DSP. Okay, so here's the thing. She just said that we could decorate this white piece or we could add a piece of coordinating DSP. So I have a thought of using this peacock here, could be a piece of coordinating DSP, so that when you see it's kind of still all peacock. Now, if that's the case, we would cut a five, um, a five by three and three quarter. If you wanted to stamp that, you definitely could. And let's see your stamp focal image on the three and a quarter by four and a quarter die cut piece. Make a sentiment strip, we could use that. Okay. So this is where, do we want more daisies in the middle or do we want, let me get the DSP here. Where did it go back here? Let me see what I have for DSP here for that pattern. I don't know if I have, I have a sheet right here. All right, perfect. Tigger, what is your dealio, buddy? He's so squeaky this morning. He's playing with the kittens. They're chasing around the house. <laughs> All right, so 
it said that we could add an optional piece of cardstock or DSP or something here. Oh, it could also be a piece of cardstock and we could emboss it as well. So that might be a cool option too. So if we put this in here, it's just, I'll have to cut it down, but to me, that's really too busy. There's too much going on, right? Then the question is, would you put, and this paper, when you look at it, there's some more granny apple in it and some more uh, peacock in it. You know, does that look okay? Okay, or the other option is, do we go with a piece of color, like a cardstock piece here, and then you would see a little bit of the white. Here, let me just cut this so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Bigger jigger. What's the dealio, baby? Oh, you're playing with your mousey. All right, so we're gonna do, I'm gonna go through, that's the scoring one. Three and 13 sixteenths by five and a sixteenth. You guys, I operate in sixteenths. <laughs> I sure do. All right, so let's just set that in here because we gave ourselves a little white border like that. I'm thinking like that is less conflicting than um, using this. If I put this in here, it could work, but the granny to me is competing with the other colors. Like granny is another color that doesn't, like I don't necessarily wanna bring that in here. Um, so when you open it up though, you'll have the peacock. So I'm kind of leaning towards um, using this piece right here and embossing it with something instead now, the million dollar question is, what do I have down here for the romper room has ended here. It's nap time. All right, happy nap time. I'm gonna emboss it with something, but I don't know, you guys. I think I might have absolutely every one of my current embossing folders upstairs. So we'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can do. And then this one is gonna be decorated. And I'm thinking that I want to, cardstock with emboss, I agree. Um, Mary Lemke says emboss with, uh, yes, you guys definitely, I think so that will look the nicest. And I have a, a kind of an idea in my head that we could do. Um, when it comes to this, to me, this is gonna be too, I want something smaller, more lines of that size. And so what I think I'm gonna do is just measure this really quick to see what size I've got here. It's like two and 13 sixteenths by three. I might do like a, uh, just a little bit smaller. Um, so I can see more of my DSP. But I might do this at two and three quarters. Two and three quarters by three and three quarters. Yes, cardstock with embossing. You guys, I think that's gonna be our winner, winner chicken dinner. See, I'm liking that a little bit more because then you see more of the edge and then you can see, you'll see some more of that embossing. So I wanna stamp this similar to how I stamped this. And I'm gonna go find, um, that punch is over uh, my counter over there, so I'll grab that, but let's see what we can do for stamping first. We need some pretty peacock ink, and we're going to need, we said yellow. I think we'll do crushed curry for our daffodil, or our, our daisies. So I've got that here. So this stamp, the way that this works is it's a, it's a bigger stamp. It just fits on that one block. I don't use this block very much. It's a very oblong one. It's the eye block but that's where that flower fits on there nicely. And we're gonna make this one say just a note. And we'll grab that right there. And then there's also these little, they look like little snowflakey things. So we're gonna use those as well. And let's grab, what is that? Oh, that's the recipe card. Well, let's grab a little baby block to put that on. And we're going to so here's the deal. This is the kind of stamp where you have to either mask a little bit or use maybe markers to do the stamping for you. So let me just show you what I mean by that. So you could in essence like hover over the top and like get that ink to where you need it to. You could take washi tape and mask it off or the other option is to use markers to actually do your, your inking up on your block. So what we can do, hmm, what am I gonna do? Because you wanna be fast with it because you don't want your ink to dry. And so what I'm thinking is, do I wanna mask or not? Do I to mask or not to mask? That is the question, right? So I'm gonna take this and put that there and this here. And I'm going to, 
a little right there and right here and mask that so that I don't accidentally hit that with my ink pad. And I'm gonna go, my peacock ink is set up for class. <laughs> so it's on the table. I'll be right back. I was thinking about using a marker for both, but then my mind got thinking, well, let's, whoa, little girl, let's ink this up just like that. Okay, so, and then that's what the washi tape was for so that you didn't get ink all over the place, right? So let's get this off of here. Now, ink does dry, right? So our goal is to get the yellow on here and now the yellow, I'm not gonna do masking because I've got my green ink on here. Now I'm gonna use, I'm going with crushed curry. And so now I can just draw my flowers. Be careful with the marker. You, you, it's a brush, right? So you don't wanna go too hard because you don't want to wreck the brush tip. All right, so then they call this like a hover puff technique, like, right? <laughs> so let's now stamp this and I've got them just like that okay hi Maria greetings from Bullhead Arizona yay all right so let that marinade on the paper and there we've got yellow so that'll be on the front here and then we are going to pull in our lost lagoon I think uh, wait, wait, wait. I'm looking at this one, but I'm thinking we don't... Hmm, will Lost Lagoon look good? Maybe. Let's see. We're going to stamp it off to the side here at second strength. Yeah, I think so. Or we could have done Peacock, but Lost Lagoon and Peacock are to me like um, Soft Succulent was with Evening Evergreen. Very complementary to each other. So we're going to do... I'm doing these at second strength, so they're not so sharp. And we're gonna do one over there. Okay, so we're getting there. And then on the inside, right? So let's worry about our inside here for a second too. And because we've got our ink open, there's, what else is there? There's a big flower like that, that we could do. But to me, that doesn't look daisy-ish. That one does slightly. So that could potentially go here in the corner or we could take and do the same thing with this guy and put some of these in the bottom corner. And I think I would like that better, but that means <laughs> back to um, masking this right here and right here. We'll do our peacock and then we will color the top again with our marker. So if you guys know that you can use your, so you cannot use your stamping blends to do this. You have to use your water-based markers to do stamping, like coloring on the blocks, like these stamps. If you use your blends, they are permanent and they will basically just color your, uh, your stamp without, <laughs> like, and they'll dry right away. So these are the water-based um, color markers that Stampin' Up! has, and they match the ink very perfectly. So we're gonna put this guy over like, I don't want that one stem down there because I think that might look weird. So we're gonna put that like there and I might've got it on the corner. I'm not quite sure. It was gonna be close. Oh, I got it, but that's okay. So um, the thing that you could do if you really, really wanted, you could mask off all of this stuff over here and you could put another stem like that. And you know what I mean by that? Maybe, maybe not. I will try, I will show you. So it's empty over here to me, right? It'd be awesome if we'd had another leaf right there. So what I'm gonna do is see if I can make that happen by using this leaf right here. And I put a piece of paper there to cover up where I don't want it to stamp, right? So I want it to come out that bottom corner just like that. And we're gonna see once if I can make this happen, having a leaf kind of off the edge. Okay, so I just made it look like that leaf. So you guys, you gotta be 
strategic or thinking about like, well, I would love a leaf there, but there was no single leaf in the stamp set. Well, there was that thing, but that's still part of a whole stamp. So this is, this is perfect. So like, I didn't want all that, but I want that. You can make it happen. And so that's how we got that in the bottom. Okay, so just a little idea to think about how you can use your stamps differently. Oh, Jenna says this is one of her favorite stamps and DSP. Yes, it is so pretty. I also brought over my little block here that still has some ink on it from splattering. And I was thinking about splattering a little on there too because we always love our splattering. And I've got a hot mess of washi tape. With, you guys got the, be careful if you get the ink all over your fingers because you might get it on your project. So what we're going to do is grab the water-based marker. So you guys, I don't even clean that because to me there's still ink on there. That means that that still can get used. All you have to do is rehydrate it with a little drop of water. Um, grab water from however you need to get water. I keep those aqua painters on standby, like right, they're right over here, so I can just pull them. Hi, little guy. What do you want, baby? You wanna go back here? Yes, there you go, buddy. Okay, so when you do some splattering, though, what do you want, you guys? He wants to say hi, <laughs> and then we say bye. Um, we're gonna do the splattering on here. You wanna make sure that you have all your things away from it, because it will splatter everywhere. And then you grab your Stella pen, and to be safe, what you could also do, is make yourself a little box. Like you can make like a light box type thing, but make a splatter box is what I would call it. And you're gonna just, we're gonna splatter a little bit on here. So find some of that peacock ink and just do a little bit of splattering. It makes the white part look less stark white. Okay. And less is best. Usually, once you get enough, I'm going to leave the peacock in my Stella pen in case I find something else I want to Stella that's peacock. Because otherwise I'm wiping that out. So I'm going to remember that, right? We're all going to remember that that's got peacock. And this is what the splattering did. It just added a little bit of texture to the background. Okay, so that's what I've got there. And then we got to find an... So you guys, I'm going to just put a disclaimer out there. I think I'm going to grab an, an a retired embossing folder from my drawer. So, right, because I just said I think all of my current ones are upstairs. And I hate to use something retired, but you know what? We all have stuff that is retired and we got to remember to use it, right? Just because I try to promote um, stuff that is current doesn't mean that you, like, it's, you know what, you guys, use what you have, right? That's what it comes down to. So, I'm gonna go find something that I have that I can use so that we can keep her moving. And I think, I'll be right back. Give me, you guys, I need 30 seconds. And I'm gonna clean up all of these little guys and put them right in the garbage over yonder. Okay, I need to find an embossing folder. I'll be right back. Yeah. And I grabbed the punches that we need. So in my head, I really wanted to do this with you guys. This uses the embossing with dyes technique. Rose featured that last month for a class, for her technique class. The dye looks like this though, right? And if it would be just slightly bigger, big enough for this, it could work. But is there a way we can make it work? Potentially, if we went just like that and then potentially ran it through just like this, maybe we could use this. And that's kind of what I'm thinking because this really goes nicely with inked and tiles. I had pulled the hammered metal 3D because it kind of did that same look. So let me just see if I have two silicone. Oh, I do. I have two silicone mats. Oh, man, you guys, I think we're going to do the embossing with dyes. Have you guys done this? Hi, Karen Wetstein. 
If you haven't done this, I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do this technique here to show you that in case you didn't see Rose's class last month. All right, so let's pull this together and see once what we have going on here. So we have this here and we've got this and this like that. I'm contemplating putting a mat on there, but I don't think we'll need to do that once we have the embossed mat. So, all right, what we're gonna do, you guys, is put a little bit of glue. We're gonna glue some things together here just so we can feel like we're making a card <laughs> versus planning a card. All right, so remember, this gets glued onto the back here and it kind of gets centered top to bottom, right? So I've got the same amount of distance here and here. So that'll go here. And do the same thing on that side, just like center, top to bottom. Just like that, okay. And then once that is glued on, that's when you can now glue on the back here to here. And our inside is already done because it's a white inside and we just stamped it. This should fit on here very nicely, just like this. Okay, and then we've already got this cut that's going to go here like that right so that goes like this this goes like that and then this will ultimately go on the front here which will be perfectly fine good i did pull the punches so this there's two punches that go with this stamp set so it's called inked and tiled and it's a bundle and it comes with two punches and i was going to see if this strip fits in here because if this strip fits in here, then we're going to use just like that. So that'll be where the just a note will fit. And then the complementary color I'm thinking would be curry because that's what we used for our stamp, for our flower. So let's grab crushed curry. And I got a little scrapperoni in here. And we're going to punch that. If we don't like it, we could always potentially make it Lost Lagoon or Peacock, but we can punch this and see what it looks like. It's always good to just see what things look like. <laughs> and that might be okay, all right? Or you know what it could have been is copper clay. So, because that, you know what? You guys, when you're designing at home, don't feel bad punching out things and trying things and testing things out till you actually see what looks the best, right? You could always, you know, if you don't want to use full sheets of cardstock to punch out, you could always um, use a marker and color it white. Oh, Tigger's going back and forth with this chipmunk. This actually, now you guys can do me um, a poll, right? All right, so here's, that's, okay, so here's the card I'm kind of looking at, right? It's like that. And then I've got that through the middle. So it kind of gets some of the copper covered up. Um, what die set is that? It's called Petal Patterns Dies. All right, so here's option A is with copper. Here is with curry. Okay, so there's, actually that's not so bad either. So that's crushed curry. And then we could even try a Lost Lagoon and see once what Lost Lagoon looks like. So, Let's punch one of the Lost Lagoons. Let's see what Lost Lagoon looks like back here. And just remember, the ribbon that I'm going to be using is the Lost Lagoon ribbon. And actually, ooh, that might be the winner because it's, it's letting the yellow stand in the background. Like yellow, yellow kind of ties in the yellow. And the copper is kind of competing as well. Right, so now we've got the last one, which is Lost Lagoon. And, you know, just to make one more choice for you guys, because, you know, we're, we're at the eye doctor, and he always gives you so many choices, right? And you're so confused at the end because they all are the same. <laughs> I don't know if that's how you guys feel, but that's how I feel sometimes. I'm like, they look the same. Um, what you could do, let's get a, let's get, I've got a scrap here of Peacock. You could always see what Peacock looks like. So... Instead of telling me option A, B, and C, and D, just tell me which color label you guys like the best, and then that will help me. Ooh, there, that's another good one. That might be because it pulls in the peacock and the peacock, and okay. So 
I am going to go get my die cutting machine, you guys, so that I can do that background with you and show you how to do that. So now that we have Peacock, Peacock is in there. You guys can change your mind if you like Peacock better. Um, all right, so let's go get the die cutting machine. I was very nervous the first time I ever had to do this, you guys. I had to call Rose like twice. I'm like, Rose, I don't want to mess this up. How do I do this? Really tell me. Oh, she sent me a video, this sweetheart. She sent me a whole video just for myself of her doing it. And <laughs> so, all right. So to do this, um, you need a platform, okay? Just one platform. And I got to think about this. I need clear plates. Hang on. Huh? All right, there's a clear plate on the bottom. And the trick to this, you guys, is you need two silicone mats, like two turntables and a microphone. That's where it's at, right? So <laughs> there's my karaoke one-liner for you guys. So you have your bottom plate, like the base plate, you have a clear plate, two of the silicone mats. And I promise you, it does not hurt the silicone mats. Um, Yes, Peacock would look nice with the Lagoon ribbon. I am liking that idea because if we did Lagoon, it's all Lagoon where Lagoon would stand off against the Peacock. So I'm agreeing with you on that one. I think that might be the best. So grab your mat here. Now, the problem with this, you guys, is it's not big enough, right? So if we leave it like that, you're going to have this voided area up there, right? So I'm going to bring it up to something like this. It's not cutting it. It's just embossing it. And then we're going to have to finagle the bottom side to make the, put the bottom right. So we're going to put the clear plate on the top and then it's magic. This rolls through. So Karen Wetstein helped me out, you guys, for this class right here. Karen Wetstein did all of these for you. So if you got that class, you have Karen to thank you for doing your embossing. All right. So super cool. Look at that, right? Isn't that look amazing? But what about that bottom part? What are we going to do? <laughs> We're going to figure this out. Oh, man. I wondered if there was a way for this. Just Oh, it's going to work just like this. I'm just going to... No one will ever know that that never was as big as it is. And it might be a hair different. But I'm going to line this up so that these peaky ones are in the, like, the, the crevasse of that flower right there. Okay? So something like this. That's where this is going to go. And I'm going to set that right back on here and hope that it doesn't move all over the place. And we're going to run this back through another time. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Let's hope. Let's hope it looks pretty even. And you know what? Oh, you know what just happened? Oh, man. Okay. Can you see what's happened? This is very pronounced. And this is nice and then this middle section here like kind of lost its edge i guess it got flattened so i didn't know that that would happen and that's okay so what we're gonna do we're gonna fix it by going back through on this side we got it nestled right in there and i'm not gonna go all the way to the end this time i'm gonna bring it in just till i feel like it is in the middle and then hopefully that re-pronounce that. Yep. So honestly, that's good. Like there is one baby section right there, but to the naked eye, no one's gonna like whoever you give the card to would never really notice that. But the bottom still is pronounced. It's just that one little strip right through there. And I'm gonna put that on the bottom. But is that not the coolest thing ever? Oh, I love that. The embossing with dies, okay? So you really want to find a die set that is de like very detailed like that. Um, and I, I'll show you guys again. There's two dies that go in that one. Hang on, let me move this out of the way. Honey, what are you doing, little girl? Um, there are two dies in this set. They're called, it's called Petal Patterns. And one looks like this. And the other looks like that. 
and this is the one we just used for that embossing with dyes. And now, you guys, that one is very complimentary to this inked and tiled set. And let's go back here. I think that we voted on this peacock one. And only put your plate edge to your hand. Only put your plate edge to your end line. Line the plate of... So you guys are saying, so line the plate up with the edge of the die. Oh, okay. I think I got what you're saying. It got squished. If you only put your top plate in the part you want to emboss, it won't squish the part you already did. <laughs> okay, you guys, I think we got it. I'm good. I get it now. Like you guys all have said the same. That's perfect. So I think all in all though, like I'm pretty good with this. You're right. If we would have lined the plate edge up with the die, that would have been perfect. Um, so this is in here right? And on this card, actually, what I did to give it that white look is I took a white ink dauber. I put white ink on a dauber and like kind of aluminified those raised edges, which we can do that as well. I think, let's just see here if we need to do. I think so. You guys, we're going to just do it all, right? So we're not just going to um, do it halfway. We're going to go big and go home and do it both. So let me grab a dauber and how I would do this with white, let me grab my white inker. I am done using uh, a dauber in an ink pad that is white because it just makes your ink pad dirty, very dirty. So I've learned from my friend Carissa. She taught me how to do this. You guys just like, oh, like a year and a half ago. You just put white ink on a block and then you put your dauber into that. Now you gotta be super careful because you don't want it like overly white, right? So like when you put this on there, it's a little bit thick. So you kind of just work a little bit of it off. And here you guys, I gotta zoom in just a little so you can kind of see how it works. Just very lightly. If you gotta go back for more ink, practice off the edge, you know, like on somewhere where you're not gonna see it. Cause if you go straight for it, you're gonna get that blob and you don't necessarily want the blob. All right, so we're gonna go back here, get a little more ink. So here's, you can see the difference. That side, I've done the white, and like this side, I haven't done it, and it just aluminifies the edge. And that's what happens if you have too much, it gets blobby. Okay, so light, light hand, you guys. I'm just barely wisping over the top of this, but just a little bit and a little along the bottom. And then I might just go right back over the top. How much is the inked and tiled class? Oh, it's $37. So you get four card kits, you get the roll of ribbon, you get a pack of embellishments, and you get a quarter pack of the designer series paper. Um, it is 37. You guys, I did figure out yesterday, Angela Knutson helped me figure out. So. Stampin' Up! raised the prices of their products back in May, and we never increased the price of inked, ink, paper, scissors last, like, in May. We didn't. We are like, oh, we're just going to go with it. Well, when we did the math for the next catalog, we mapped it out, and we're like, yup, we need to um, raise prices. Just a hair, you guys. So ink, paper, scissors for August is still $37, because that was what was published. Um, but for... Going forward in September, it is $39 if you need it mailed. So it's just $2 more. If you're in person, it's $32 versus $30. And if um, you will note, though, on the schedule, sadly, I can catch a lot of things, but I did not catch that on my schedule, you guys. I have it wrong. So it is wrong. It says the wrong price here. Oh, I'm already zoomed. I got to zoom back. Um, that's wrong. And anybody who goes to pay on my website, it's the right price. And if you, you reach out to me to ask how much to send, I will tell you correctly. But just so you know, it is incorrect on the PDF schedule. I guess you can't catch everything all of the time. <laughs> so Linda Hall would like this class mailed. All right. So I will add you to IPS for August and get that in the mail for you. Okay. So you guys are making tracks here. This is our belly band. I am going to keep it with the peacock. I don't want the... The, the, as much of the granny showing. So I'm gonna start it here. And how I do belly bands is I kind of just fold it over. You do not want it tight and um, like stuck to it. You kind of want to just roll it around it and then bring it around 
You don't have to score it, but just kind of gently roll it over. And I've got some extra here. So what I'm gonna do is just snip this off. So that works. Um, the reason I'm not making it super tight is because when you go to put the belly band back on, you want it to be able to slide on easily. And if you have it so tight, it might not um, be easy to get on. So well, the belly band goes here, like that. Get that, have a second to, to dry. And then we need to do just a note. And I'm thinking that that will be in the peacock ink, which I did grab, it's over here. And I noticed that that has a little knicker is what I say. Let's get that smoothed out from the punch. And let's see what happens for stamping this just to note. <laughs> so, oh, I might. I'm just gonna wing it and see when's what happens. Okay, so Linda Hall said that, Linda, I'll let you know when your check arrives. Oh my gosh, all right. It's a little bit baby crooked, like maybe on that side. So just to try again, you might as well, right? Flip it over and try one more time. If you don't like it, then go with whichever one you like better or do it again. Um, and this is good because you guys, if you get this in your class, this um, it's gonna be die cut like that. You could always cut a new piece. Basically, all you have to do is, if you want it looking the same, like let's say you're still not happy with it. Let's try one more time. And of course that one looks good. Um, all you have to do is take your scissors and you can make those ends just like that. Right, that's how you can make it look just like that. So, all right, I'm still gonna go with this guy though. All right, then we have this guy. And I think I'm gonna leave it not matted. I thought about putting a mat around the edge of it, but I'm like, oh, what color, right? The only one that maybe, Peacock will get lost, right? The only one that maybe could work would be Lost Lagoon, I think, if this has that. But I don't know if it needs it, right? To add another mat behind, it, it, it's like almost too much. Having the white against the peacock is nice and having the white against everything. So to me, like that, I think I might just leave that. And then we talked about having this guy in peacock and then just a note going here. And then we're gonna bring in the lagoon ribbon. And I think we might call this a day. So let's figure out how we did this. So we need the tear and tape. All right, so tear and tape, we need one waiting in the wings. And you're gonna put the tear. So you guys are getting a little precursor on how to put this together for those that did ink, paper, scissors. Um, and then you're gonna weave your ribbon back and forth. I have not written the tutorial yet. You guys, the class got mailed out, but I wrote monthly class for this week, and then I will write ink, paper, scissors for next week. So the only time it feels like homework to me is writing tutorials, you guys. <laughs> I cannot lie. It feels like I have to write a paper every time and it's due by a certain day. <laughs> oh, that's how that goes. All right, so there's our ribbon and I'm gonna put another piece of tear and tape over the top. And then I'm going to grab my little dimensionals and I'll just use the black ones because that's what I have here. And we'll put one on the end of each of these like that. All right, and then that gets nestled right into this. So they fit perfectly. And then we'll line that up. That's why I went for not the one that I cut. I went for the one that got punched. So you might practice. Because um, when I we punched, so actually Karen punched all these for you guys. So she was a great help with this class. Where are those punches? They are right here. These, these ends meet these ends and that. So you guys will get it looking like that. And you'll just have to cut off the top and the bottom of it. Okay. All right, so we're making tracks here now. Now let's, this gets glued along here. You could pop it up or you could glue it. I think what I'll do is just go run through the middle here so that I don't risk putting glue on the top and the bottom. And that just gets centered right through here. I'm kind of looking for where my edges are so that it's all centered nicely. So like that, oh, and then I went and moved it. Look at that, that glue wiggled on me. And that's okay, because we'll wiggle it right back all right, then this, I'm going to glue this flat. So the just a note got popped up. I always think of just for men when I see just a note. <laughs> so we're gonna put this guy right over here. 
Got a little bit of white showing, I think, or if you want to get rid of the white, or I kind of wiggle things around until I get it exactly where I think it looks the best. Something like that looks good to me. And, well, what did we, we didn't Stella anything, but I've got the Peacock Stella in here. So I don't think it would hurt to Stella the belly band here, right? Use up some of that. You could Stella your little guy here, that little Peacock, right? Because we've got the Peacock ink and that helps us wipe it out without wasting the Stella, all right? And then when you're done, make sure you, I had little sheets of paper somewhere. When you think you're good enough with it, then, oh, here they are. Then just wipe that out and make sure you don't have any peacock left for the next time. And on this one, we are going to use the brushed brass butterflies. So let's grab them real quick. Put this away, that away, and they're underneath here. Gotta find, <laughs> I knew they were down there. And I got just a few left. Oh man, I have three left. Three lonely little soldiers here. I think I'll just go for three then. All right, so put one up there. And we'll put one over there. And I go for different heights. I don't put them at the same level. I go one, two, and then this next one will be dropped down over here and not in line with that one. So kind of tucked in just a little bit. Um, and you know what you could do too, if you wanted, you could put one on the belly band. Um, don't squish them down because you can play around with them until you figure out exactly where you want them. So we could do that one and move that one out just a hair and put that one facing that way and then they don't look all lined up. Okay, we used up some butterflies, I love it. Okay, and I'm okay with the gold on here even though you got a little copper clay going on. Um, with these, you guys, these are extra. Um, if you have a friend, like let's say you don't like having like loose items like this, like you don't think you'll use, give them to a friend and say make something pretty because that's usually what I do. Otherwise what I do is I put them in like with the stamp set. I leave these loose things kind of like in with the stamp set so that in when I go to create in the future, I have them. I know what they're all about. Um, yeah, so I don't know. You think it's okay? Then this belly band like that. Oh man, I gotta get it just right. That slides off, and then this opens up, and then we've got the flowers on the inside. So the only thing now that I wish I would have done different is um, using the inked and tiled designer series paper to go with it, because that having that on the sides here would have really accented it. Um, using like one of these yellow pieces would have been really pretty too. Um, I opted for the daisy paper just because I thought that would be good because we were going for 12 by 12. But I think all in all, it, it gets pulled together and it's okay. They look like yellow daisies. And then when you open it up, that looks really coordinating nice. I absolutely love that. That is my favorite thing about this card, this right here. So, all right. So we got it done, you guys. Are you excited to see um, Sherry's card to see what she did? <laughs> I hope so. So let's pull my class out of the way. Again, you guys, I have about eight left of these going into this class today. Um, if anybody still wants to get signed up for it, just let me know. And then we're going to pull this out and see what it says, the reveal card. So I did notice that Sherry made her very own envelope here, you guys. So this is some of that Dandy Delight or Dandy Gardens. It was like Dandy some from Celebration. So she made her own envelope. And she put it inside. Look at this. Okay, let's see what she's got. Ice cream cones. So she decorated an envelope. So again, you guys, this is a handmade, this is a handmade envelope. So you can make your, um, like they have ways to make your own envelopes. They had an envelope punch board back in the day. Um, there's different ways you can make your own envelope, but she made her own to put in an envelope, it looks like. And let's see what she's got here. Ice cream. So Sherry, I don't know if you're still watching, but I honestly, I cannot remember the name. When I see this, I don't remember the name of the stamp set. I just, uh, it looks familiar to me, but I can't peg for what the name is. Um, I do see here, this is, this I recognize. This is from Masterfully Made, the um, designer series paper. She used some of the in colored dots, it looks like. Deckled rectangles. So we've got, we've got the front looking the same. She's got her belly band here. I was trying to keep it a surprise so you could use the other envelope. Ah, got it. I get it. So she, yes, yeah, so this envelope, 
goes with this card and then this um, envelope can get used as well. All right, so let's open it up. Very cool, sweet cola. You are so sweet, very cool. Uh, and she decorated with a little designer paper on the inside and her, oh, look at this. She used the deckled rectangles around the edge here as well. And it's so cool because when you are looking at this like that, her DSP here, hi Brenda Shooty. Her, her DSP matches and coordinates also nicely as well. Nice card, yes, and techniques. So Sherry, um, I'm looking at this. I don't remember the name. Hi, Sylvia Harris. Um, yeah, you guys. So I will be honest with you. When I do this class with you, I definitely take the time to walk you through my thought process for designing cards and what I pick and how I pick and how I just like how I come up with different patterns. And like, this is my way to teach you guys the card making process. I know Kathy Jackson has always wanted to know, like, what she wanted me to do a tip Tuesday on how to make a card. And it's like, oh man, we didn't need weeks and months to do that, right? <laughs> so um, so this class, my Share, Create, Inspire, is a way for me to teach you guys those little little tips and tricks for how to come up with like layouts and mats. And um, thankfully, I have people like Sherry um, Pyre here, um, and then the other five gals or six gals that gave me layouts that I can walk through and talk through especially if you guys get a recipe like this, or if you're like looking at a card and you want to case it. So like, let's say you get this card in the mail. Um, this was made from Carissa. Um, you get this card in the mail and you're like, oh, I really love the layout, but I don't have the stamp set or the pots. Take the layout and make it your own by putting your own designer paper, embossing different and putting something else like this could have easily gotten picked up and put on here and using the inked and tiled DSP on the background. So, and you could have done this whole embossing thing on the back of that too. So finding a layout, liking it, and then incorporating it with what you have is amazing. Okay, super cool in the AC page 28. So thanks for pulling that information up for me right away. We can go to page 28 just to show you guys. Wait, there it is. Oh, it's called super cool. Thanks, Seal. I didn't even know that, oh, you guys, I think. Do you ever get it like the catalog and you block something out because you're like, yup, I don't like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like that happens to everybody, I think. So I can't be alone, but I literally looked at the stamp set and I saw the pretzel and I'm like, I don't want a pretzel. <laughs> and it had, it had this, this thing here. And I'm like, oh, huh. okay. So now this gives this new light because I was like, I have no idea what stamp set that is. And it's because I've never really looked at this. And now this shows you guys a perfect card, an amazing card using the ice cream. And then it has, hey, there is from it. The you are and so cool. And the soda is in here in that stamp set. So this is the perfect sherry. Good, good, good use of this stamp set because you bamboozled me. I did not know that it came from here because I think I saw the pretzel and my mind like blocked it out because I'm like, I'm not gonna make a card with a pretzel on it. Like, but now that I see it, Tyler loves these big pretzels. If we go to a place that has those German style pretzels with the mustard and the cheese, he loves it. All right, Tigger, what are you doing, buddy? Stop it. No, no, no. He's going after treats, you guys. Um, you guys. He knows where the little treat box or the little treat bag is. So, all right, what all comes with the kit? Um, Marsha, I will show you guys. So easy to fussy cut too. Good, good. You guys, give me 30 seconds. I will show you a kit that I have here that I um, have for somebody that's going out. Tigger. Buddy. Okay. So Pauline Driscoll recently got this one and I have to mail this out to her today. So it comes with the four card kits. So you guys, when you get kits from me, it comes with all your kit and stuff, basically in an envelope for a traditional class. All these, so those four cards that I just showed you here, you'll get four kits that look like this. You'll get a quarter pack of the designer series paper. 
you'll get the embellishments. And you guys, I always put the embellishments in backwards so that the ribbon doesn't disrupt them and mush them all around. So you'll be like, it would look prettier to get it like this, I get it. But I always put it in upside down like that so that it rubs against the paper and not against the ribbon and you get the roll of ribbon. So it's called a product-based class because you'll get a quarter pack of paper, the embellishments and the ribbon, and then your four card kits. And you have extra um, of all of the embellishments, ribbon and paper to make more cards or make something else with them. So. Um, the pretzel is great for Philly friends. Yes, I love it. You have your Philly friends make some pretzel cards and send us pictures. So that's what you get for this. This is $37 in August. Um, and that includes the mailing. You guys at $7 to ship the package. And so the class itself is $30 if you want porch pickup or to do in person with Diane. Diane's doing this class in person next week, Tuesday. And then I'm doing it online on the 31st. So that's what you would get. So good question on that one, Marsha. Um, the stamp set is super cool. You guys are so good on the line. You know that. <laughs> I just completely didn't get it. So now I'm excited. I will photograph this card for Sherry. I'm going to photograph my card and I will put them into the event and into the website and email it. I'll also take a picture of this so that you guys can see um, the recipe card that Sherry, I'll put that into the event as well. And then what you guys need to do, if you are so inclined, um, you will go to Facebook. Let's go to Facebook. Now, I didn't create the post. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I did. We'll have to see how on my A game I was, you guys. If you go to my... So I operate in both YouTube and Facebook. I have a big Facebook page that I um, create events on, I post on. And in here for events, you can find the happening now and it, it will move from upcoming to past but happening now and in here if i was on my a game i created a post in the discussion i did it i'm so excited with myself okay did you find inspiration in the share create inspire card class share your creations here by wednesday august 23rd at 11 p.m central to be entered into a prize drawing to into the drawing to win a prize and this is where you would click on comments and share your picture of your card I and mean, then you want to tell us if you want what you use that would be great there are no requirements on like does it have to be stampin up or not like we love to see stampin up products because that's what we use primarily here but if you guys are using other products like it's okay to use other things right this class is to inspire you to use products that you have at home right don't go buy something for this class use what you have at home now if you don't have anything at home and you need to buy things great i'm your girl like you can get some stamping up stuff through me that would be awesome but you don't have to right so this is your time to share it post a picture of your creation in the comments for a chance to win a prize and what will happen is next week thursday night actually i won't be live next thursday um, you guys, Kelly is going to be live Thursday morning and she's going to be doing Paper Pumpkin at 9 a.m. on the 24th. Uh, we, I will be in Las Vegas for the Stampin' Up! event, the Leaders Conference, and she has something with her kids. She wants to attend like parent-teacher stuff. There's something with back to school that she hasn't been able to do the last two years and she wants to do it. So she asked if we could switch the class to be at 9 a.m. and I said, that's fine. Um, Christine, I can, if I can pay you next week. Ah, yes, Carol Alanis. Absolutely. Let me write your name down. Um, so Paper Pumpkin is next week. Now, I want to do the drawing for this when I have the Ink, Paper, Scissors class, which will be the 31st. So you guys will pull the name sometime after the 23rd to get in on the drawing. And we'll do the winner's um, announcement on the 31st when I have that class. Um, if you guys are wondering where Tigger just went to, he literally cleared all that stuff. Okay. He's giving himself a bath, but he jumped from down here up and over that stuff. And he thinks he's so funny and clever right now. But if you heard the noise, that is what he did. And I'm like, oh, okay, as long as he doesn't drop everything on the floor, um, we're okay. <laughs> so, Carol Alanis, I'm adding you to my list here to get that to you. And yes, you can send 37 next week. That is fine. Um, the class isn't till the 31st, you guys. So, we've got some time on it. We have two weeks. So, um, all right. You learn new things every time you watch class. Great, Ileana. That is what it's all about. And you know what? Sometimes you could know something but not remember it. And then watching the class helps you remember it too, which is pretty awesome. That Tigger, that bigger Tigger. He is a stinker. And that note, you guys, <laughs> he is a big stinker. And here he comes. He thinks he's so funny. All right, you guys. 
The cats are wanting some treats, apparently, and I think that's my cue to let um, let all of you go <laughs> so that I can give them some time and some love. Um, you guys, this was a great class. I'm happy that they didn't get rambunctious until the end here, but they think they are so cute. Um, I hope you guys enjoy seeing Bigger Tigger and his companions, his padres here, his, uh, what do you call them, his amigos his amigos bigger tigger and his amigos um from time to time they make their cameo appearances you guys they love to be part of the interaction so <laughs> all right so um paypal is perfect carol awesome if you do paypal friends and family to my email address that is awesome all right you guys i hope you were um definitely inspired and go out and try making this card at home and if you do share a picture of it we always love to see um, the different ways that the card can be made in terms of the papers, the colors, the inks, um, and, and the same layout, though. That is super cool. All right. What I'm going to be working on after this, you guys, is I am going to publish clue number one for Mystery Card Night. Um, I have class again at one. And so I'm going to get it started. If for any reason I don't get it done before class, I will finish it right after class. But I have three classes today, you guys. I have this class. I have in-person monthly at one, and I have in-person monthly at six o'clock. So... It is a big day. Sherry Everett, I came up with a list for you for your classes for September. I will send you a picture of that momentarily, like in the next few hours as well. So I know you had messaged me what that is, and I, I have it. Uh, you guys, we don't have many classes in the first half of September because we are going to be hot in, in the thick of planning and prepping for the, the Autumn Creative Escape which is September, like that second weekend in September. It's like, well, it's actually the third weekend in September. It's like the 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th. And then right after that, classes galore. So um, for kidding up classes, we are going to be doing a little switcheroing with Mystery Card Night, you guys. Mystery Card Night is going to be on the front end of the month. Um, I think Kelly is going to be doing Mystery Card Night for me while I'm in Maryland. So yay. Oh, Vicki Eakins, you would like to join the class. Vicki, if you're still watching, um, send me an email, chrismbertram at msn.com or text me. Make sure you include your name when you text me, guys. Sometimes I get text messages from people I don't have you saved in my contacts and I don't know who you are. So make sure you give me your name and let me know what class you want to take and we'll make sure we get you signed up for it. Oh, Veronica's here. Veronica, yay, hi. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed the class. It sounds like you did. Um, I'm happy to see and hear that. And we will see you tomorrow for sure for monthly class at 6 p.m. Um, the cards that we're going to be making... Oh, they're on the table. I can't even show them to you. <laughs> We're good. Um, if you want the monthly class, though, I still have some of that left. So if anybody's looking to get ink, paper, scissors, and the monthly class, or Let's Just Stamp, or um, Earthern Textures, make sure you let me know. I could consolidate everything and save you guys a bunch of shipping. So yay. All right. I'm going to sign out and get to work. All right. Lots of love. Sunshine, big hugs to everybody. I'm going to count to 10 just in case it cuts out early. One, two, three. Love you. Long time. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten.